everyone and welcome back to another Fun Fact Friday. My name is Sarah and on this channel you'll find a lot of videos of me sketching animals and sharing facts about them. My goal for this channel is to share my passion for animals in a way that combines my passion for creating art too. If you like this type of content, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment what animals you're interested in so I can make videos you like too. In the description box below, you'll find all the resources I used to get the facts that I share in this video, as well as the supplies I used, and links to my social media. So feel free to check those out if you're interested. Today's main fact revolves around ostriches and how fast they are. Ostriches can run faster than most horses. Most horses gallop 25 to 30 miles per hour, and ostriches run top speed at 45 miles per hour. Now, the world record for horse galloping is 55 miles per hour, but only for a short distance, while ostriches can actually maintain their top speed for up to a half hour. The reason they can run so fast is actually because they can store double the elastic energy per step on their leg tendons than humans can. This reduces the effort needed by the muscles to enable the ostrich to run twice as fast with half the energy. I haven't drawn a horse in so long, I would argue years. When I was really little, I was obsessed with the movie Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron. I was obsessed with everything about that movie, the animation of it, the style of it, the artwork of it. I mean, as a kid, I didn't appreciate it as much as I do now because of all the art training I have now to really notice those things. But nonetheless, I would watch those bonus videos at the end of my spirit dvd where the artist who created spirit would teach you how to draw him and i would watch those videos over and over and over and over again and try and draw from them and horses still are challenging to me <laughs> there was a lot of erasing in the sketches i have of horses in this video and lots of fixing and i think at one point i changed my color of pencil so that it would be darker so i could see over the other pencil that i was using because i was erasing there so much there's nothing wrong with that at all. It's just all part of the process of learning how to draw better and learn what you're drawing. You should never be ashamed of erasing or feel like you're a bad artist if you keep erasing and only good artists never erase because that's bogus. Everyone erases. It's a very, very, very important part of the drawing process. Another interesting fact that I learned is ostriches were occasionally used for riding or pulling chariots in ancient Egypt. But I guess that never really took off because they do have very nasty tempers. For those of you that don't know, they have a very powerful kick. They have those long, long legs, and as we talked about before, they have that elasticity to it. So they're able to kick very hard with minimal effort. Quick tip for you, if you ever come across an angry ostrich, something you can do is put a sock over his head and move his head down towards his knees because then he physically doesn't have the center of gravity to kick you. So just a little tip there in case you ever find yourself in that situation, you're welcome. Another tip is to just stay away from ostriches in general. Also, they kick forward because that's the way that their knees bend. So their knees actually bend kind of opposite to us in a way. So if we try and kick forward, we can only really extend our knee, but their knee can extend further, if that makes sense, I guess. So I thought that was super interesting. I never really thought about that before. Here I'm starting to draw an ostrich with a rider on it. I haven't gone that much into my research on that part, but I just noticed when I was looking up pictures of ostriches racing, I found a bunch of photos with actual people riding them, which I thought was pretty interesting, so I thought I'd do a doodle there just to have a reference for myself, really, that that's a possibility for an illustration in the future. I use my sketchbook as a way of note-taking and jotting down sketches that I think might be helpful or help me remember a cool fact that I learned about animals in the future so I can make more illustrations and drawings based off of it. I was getting a little frustrated on telling in the reference where his leg was and where it was in the feathers and if it was under the wings and, or what. So, so I decided to keep that sketch very minimal. And since I didn't want to include a rider on the ostrich in my final illustration, I decided that this would be okay. <laughs> now, if my plan was to include a rider on the ostrich in my final illustration, I would definitely investigate that further and I would recommend you do the same. So if you know something is in your illustration, you should definitely study it before you hop on into that illustration. So here I'm drawing an ostrich head. Now, I've done a lot of ostrich drawings before, but I've also mostly done them as an ostrich snake hybrid. So I did a lot of ostrich body snake heads, so I never really got to focus on ostrich heads before. And if you're interested in a snostrich illustration, check out my Instagram. I have some drawings of that on there. 
So I took this opportunity, since I'm just drawing a regular animal and not an animal hybrid, that I would do some studies of just an ostrich head. And something I noticed right away is that their eyeballs are huge. And I looked up and they're actually the size of billiard balls. And since they take so much space up in the skull, their brain is actually way smaller than either of their eyes. I saw this interesting tidbit in one of the articles I posted down below that their small brain might be the reason that although they can run so fast, they're not the greatest at eluding predators because they tend to run in circles and are very predictable. I also learned that ostriches don't have teeth. What they do to grind their food down to make it easier for their stomach to digest is they swallow their food with sand and small stones to help them grind the food to make it easier for them to digest. I decided to add another sketch on this page to show how weird ostrich feet are. Now, if you've watched my last video and if you haven't, you should check it out. It's in the description. <clears throat> but in that last video, I did touch on about how I never really noticed how weird animal feet are until I start studying that animal. So I think in the last video, I mentioned giraffes and beavers. But ostriches are actually the first animal I really, really noticed how bizarre their feet are. Because I never really thought about their feet ever in my life until I started to draw them. And I feel like that's relatable to other artists who have drawn animals. So what they have here is two toes and only one of them has this very dense claw on it. And then the other toe is just like a nub. And they're both very calloused very almost scaly especially going up the leg and and down the toe with the claw on it it's got like this row of dinosaur looking scales i might actually think they were dinosaur feet of some kind because they're just so bizarre and i've never really seen anything like it or if i have i just never really thought about it before you'll also see that i cut out a bunch of parts of the video where i was twirling my pencil kind of figuring out what i need to tweak in this illustration but not actually drawing anything and i think these parts especially are super, super essential when you're trying to grow as an artist. I've gone through a lot of art schooling and lots of art classes with all different types of people. And I think one of the best advices I've gotten is when you're drawing something for a very long time, the most important and helpful thing you can do is just take a step back and look at the whole thing. Don't put any new marks down, just look at it. Really look at everything that you've drawn and kind of see everything as a whole. Sometimes if I have the time and there's no deadline really close or anything like that, I'll actually stop drawing if I'm getting really frustrated and I'll go to sleep, I'll take a walk, I'll walk my dog, for example, get some food and really get out of the space I'm creating art in and take my eyes off of it so that I can look at it again with fresh eyes and it really, really does help you see some things that you might want to fix. Or you might see your work and be like, wow, all the stuff that I was very frustrated about, it actually doesn't look that bad and you might end up keeping it. A lot of those things happen, but you wouldn't really know if you were just burying your nose into it for so long and never had a chance to take a step back. Another thing you might notice is that before I start a new drawing on that page, I tend to do a very, 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 very light, soft sketch of the general feeling, gesture of whatever I'm drawing. Usually I leave those gesture strokes very, very light and very, very simple. It's also kind of hard to see these gesture sketches sometimes, especially in this video, in my videos before. I think it's because my art brain is like, well, as long as I draw really lightly, the camera can't really process it yet, so I'm not really broadcasting it to the internet yet. So I'm gonna make sure I'm really confident before I actually make darker lines and show the rest of the world how this drawing is going. All of the sketches I'm doing are really just trying to get a grasp of what ostriches look like, what horses look like, and really get a feel for how they work, how they look, before I start drawing my final illustration. So this is the part of this horse sketch where I decided to switch colorized pencils because towards the bottom of where those legs are bent and overlapping, that spot in particular took me a very long time to try and figure out exactly the foreshortening that was going on in those limbs there. So this is where I found it definitely more helpful if I were to change to a darker purpley color to be able to see over the lines that I drew and erased and drew again and erased over again a little bit easier so I could continue the drawing with more confidence and just keep on trucking. Another tip when you start to get frustrated on foreshortening is to really again take a step back and try and break it up into shapes so in horses, in humans, in any type of body, plants, any type of anything you're drawing really they all can be broken down into simpler shapes 
So if you really try and think about how the form in a three-dimensional space, you can start thinking about them as planes on a form rather than an organic form that blends into each other, if that makes sense. It's, it's a little bit challenging, but I find it very helpful to take complex shapes and break them down to simpler ones to try to learn how they work together to create whatever I'm trying to draw. So now I'm starting to come up with a thumbnail and sketch a little bit of planning for the illustration I'm working on for this topic. At the end of this video, I will include the digital progress of this illustration I'm working on. I couldn't get to the point where it was done before this video because I do have a lot of other responsibilities as far as pieces for my graduation portfolio that I need to get together by the end of the semester. So those have taken a little bit higher priority than this one has, but I'm hoping once I graduate, I can start focusing on the illustrations that I'm using in these videos more than stressing out about the other stuff I have to work on. Now in this sketch, you can almost barely see what I'm drawing, but if you'll notice, I literally drew oval shapes and sticks coming out of them to represent the horses and the general blob of the, the horse rider on top of them. And if you didn't know what I was drawing, you probably wouldn't even tell that that's what they were. But the whole purpose of a thumbnail is just to get the general placement of everything you're gonna draw into a composition so that it works and that you're happy with it before you put in all those details. For this one, I was pretty solid on what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to have a row of racehorses and then an ostrich at the end of it, almost at the finish line type idea. So this was kind of me just sketching that out on the type of composition I wanted for this illustration. If you've watched my last video, you'll notice that this video is a little bit different. So I decided to do this time-lapse type video, speed paint, if you will to cut down on the length and hopefully make it easier for me to jam pack it with information when I'm not trying to focus on what I'm drawing and what I'm saying at the same time. And I think it just makes it easier for everyone to listen to and for me to say. Let me know in the comments if you prefer this time-lapse type video, if you like watching speed draws, or if you prefer me to kind of just ramble while I draw. I'm always looking for any kind of tips and tricks you can give me for starting this YouTube channel and making content that you guys like but I thought I'd give you an idea of everything a little bit more fleshed out than this thumbnail. And in the future videos, I can give updates or you can follow me on Instagram to check those out when they're finished. I'm sure you can tell that it's clearly not done in any way yet, but like I said, I do have a lot of other responsibilities and other projects I'm working on so I can graduate at the end of the semester. With all the craziness going on, it's a little hard to stay focused on what I need to do and what I have to do and what I want to do. So bear with me for not having a completely finished illustration in a week. <laughs> Any other animals you're super interested in or ideas for new videos you'd like to see me do, let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas and general feedback on how I can make every video better than the last. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. find out that ostriches were ostriches that ostriches uh, I can't say ostriches <laughs>